What did you do? How can you communicate? The danger that is. But anyway, I'm talking about this. No, what is fascinating of what you're describing is that um, you were describing the method of what the Sao Paulo Forum was doing in Latin America. Mm. First, the environment. 20 or 30 years of counterculture and materialism, and I usually say to my friends that if the generation of my father lived, salaries would never be possible. It is possible in my generation. I, I remember that when I was young, when I came home, I always found my father sitting in his chair reading. And his friends too, reading, learning, studying. They, they, they had profound conversations. Mm -hmm. What you have now in my generation is people coming home from work and putting on the TV. Yeah. And just uh, enjoying the... Um, entertainment industry, but no more studying as something that you do when you have free time. You study because you have to, because you have to go to university, you have to graduate, but not something that you do it because you enjoy it, you enjoy to learn. Mm -hmm. So that's the environment, the, let's say, relative ignorance. Ignorance not because people have not gone to school, but because their methods or their Customs have changed. Secondly, to have dictatorships that are not brute, cruel, direct, you know, Fidel Castro style of putting fire squads, no, that's not the method. The method is to speak very elegantly and say the Constitution, this Constitution, is not good enough to do what it must be done to solve the problems of hunger, poverty, services, housing, education, etc., etc. So the Constitution must be changed. And then by doing little things, you change the system. Let me explain you in the case of Venezuela, Bolivia, and Ecuador how it works. The, the importance of changing the Constitution is changing the names. The Supreme Court doesn't have any more of that name. It turns into the Supreme Tribunal. Instead of the Congress, it's called National Assembly, and so on and so forth. So people who were elected the very same year as Chavez was elected president or Evo Morales was elected president, for the same five-year term, they tell to them, listen, you were elected as a congressman to the Congress, but the Congress does not exist anymore. The new constitution has created a new public branch of power, which is the National Assembly. So you have to go home. Mm -hmm. Who elects the new members of the National Assembly? Well, the people who change the constitution because they uh, absorb or they, um, they somehow arrogate uh, special power to do that. So what Chávez and Evo Morales have been doing, and now Rafael Correa in Ecuador, is to change the Constitution in order to control all branches of power, all legally, all is done through elections. The goal, the immediate goal, always, is to take control of the electoral system. For example, in Japan, which is the most technified country probably in the world, hmm? Uh, elections are manually, vote is manually and we count manually. In Venezuela, which is a third world country, the elections are electronic. And the kind of machines they use for voting is the same kind of machines that in Italy they use to play bingo. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you want to vote in Venezuela, you have to go to a, a fingerprint reading machine like the one they have here in the entrance of the immigration in the United States. In Venezuela, if you want to vote, you first have to go to the printing, to the uh, fingerprint machine. So that eliminates the secret, the secrecy of the vote, because by comparing the list of people who have voted with the list of votes in the other machine, you can you can discover who voted for who. No, I, I'm in a second because. We have reached this state in America, of course, 
where they are more and more introducing these electronic means. And for years, uh, I and some others have taken the position that you should not allow your voting system to be done by any means that cannot be verified by a citizen off the street mm -hmm. right, who has just the basic education. Mm -hmm. Once you have put it into the hands of a pro or, or, or under the rubric of a process where manipulation of that process can only be verified by experts, mm -hmm. then the country belongs to whoever can buy those experts. Yeah. Right. If they can be bought and sold, and most human beings can, mm -hmm. then your elections have no outcome uh, except what the highest bidder for those services uh, is going to want, because nobody else can verify that tampering has not been done. And and so what you just said, I think, is is obvious in some ways that, but not to people here. So the position I take is characterized as, well, that's crazy, and, mm -hmm. and you're just uh, um, you know, against progress, and so forth and so on. Oh, I love these little machines, they're quite useful. Uh, but but not for voting. But not for voting, exactly. Yeah. So uh, once the Constitution is changed legally for the vote, and once the electoral system is taken by the executive, then the rest goes automatically. Uh, elections every year? in order to build the dictatorship and it's done through elections. The model is exportable. Uh, Chavez has financed the career or, or the campaign of at least the three uh, acting presidents right now. Evo Morales in Bolivia, Rafael Correa in Ecuador, and Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua. And they're doing exactly the same thing for what Chavez is in Venezuela. Change the constitution, control the electoral system, have elections every year and build the dictatorship through laws that are passed legally and then mm -hmm. approved in a public and popular referendum. So this is a new kind of dictatorship and it's, it's growing all over Latin America. There are 14 governments now that are related to the Sao Paulo for It's a moderate uh, um, side or another um, branch of the Sao Paulo Forum, and then you have the radicals. The radicals, you have Raul Castro in Cuba, Chavez, Morales, Correa, Ortega, and you can include there the president uh, of Argentina, Cristina Kirchner. Mm -hmm. And in the moderate side, there are also members of the Forum of Sao Paulo. You have Lula, Tavares Vázquez, Michel Bachelet, Martin Torrijos, René Treval, Leonel Fernández, Fernando Lugo, 14 presidents of Latin America that they would love to see Obama do in the United States what they are doing in South America. It's important also to see how these radicals inside the Sao Paulo Forum work together with the more moderate members of the Sao Paulo Forum. Actually, Lula was the creator of the Sao Paulo Forum. Yeah, he's, a, see, he's very moderate mm. and he looks to be a friend of the United States, but mm. he was the creator and the mastermind of the Sao Paulo Forum. Mm. So uh, people here only paid attention to, to Chavez and they thought that Chavez is the problem and Lula can be an alternative to Chavez. But this is absolutely false because Lula created Chavez. Lula mm. created the Sao Paulo Forum in 1990, Lula and Fidel Castro. And uh, Chavez was admitted with Sao Paulo Forum in '95, and they prepared the, the, the way for Chavez. There is a, a speech that Lula made some years ago, where he confessed that the Sao Paulo Forum, Sao Paulo Forum, has more than uh, 2,000 uh, organization members. Uh, and he confessed that the Sao Paulo Forum was instrumental to put Chavez from power and to keep him there. Mm. And here, nobody wanted to, to know about that. When the first time I came here to, to try to contact uh, American opinion makers and tell them what was really going on in, in, in Latin America, all of them called me crazy. And there was a meeting at the CFR, Council of Foreign Relations, where two so-called specialists in Latin America, they 
said that the, the Sao Paulo form didn't exist at all. But I created it. <laughs> and who do you think that George Bush would believe? Me or the CFR? Yeah. <laughs> so I had no, ch no chance at all. <laughs>